Hello. In this video, I'll show you how you can create a displacement map for this kind of stitching right here, and how you can apply it to a model. So we need to get this kind of curvature here. It's not just the stitching, it's also this curve right here. So I'll just start with a plane. I'll just make it 150 by 150, and center it. And this will be my bake plane, so I'll just move this below here and then make a copy right here. Just move it to zero on the z-axis here and g to turn off the grid. And I'll just give this a gray material and now I'll apply it a poly and I'll just insert let's say three segments through here and I'll just select this edge and move it down. And I'll select these vertices and scale them apart. I want there to be some room here. And now I just select an edge here and chamfer. And now I just insert, let's say, one segment through here. And then two through here. And now I can just apply a turbo smooth just to see how this will subdivide. You may want to make some changes here, such as getting these further apart. I'll just insert an edge through here as well. And now I can just select these polygons and bevel down here. I'll just delete these polygons here. And now I will select these polygons and detach this clone. And now I will select the detached object and apply a show modifier. Increase the outer amount here. And also activate straighten corners here in the bottom. And then turbo smooth. And this would be the stitch here. And we do want there to be a little bit of darkness here in the center. So what I can do is just select these vertices, move them further apart here, and just apply symmetry on the y-axis. And here I'll just activate angle snap and just kind of rotate this around here as an instance. And now I'll select this vertex and apply symmetry to change the other side of the stitch right here. And now in order to get this hole to be the same length as this hole, I'll just delete out a poly. And once again, I'll just bevel down. What I will do is simply select these vertices and just scale them inwards. All right, there we are. So now that I've got that, I can select this plane and move it to zero here. Then we can go into rendering and render to texture, hotkey zero. Enable projection mapping, go to options. I'll just change the ray mist check color here. Enable the global super sampler. Activate projection, pick and pick these objects down here. And now we may also want to change the height map settings here, but I'll just use the default ones for now. And add 
a height map. I'll just make this 512, run it to files only, and render. I also want to bake out another texture, an alpha texture. So in some situations, you'll want the stitching to be a different color than the rest of the object. Here, for example, we have some dark leather and white stitching. So we need an alpha texture to get this color here. So I can just delete the height map, and I can just add a diffuse map. I also make it 512. So I'll give this object a black material, and these two objects a white material. Just like this, and I'll just once again render. And here is the alpha map right here. So now what I will do is just model something real quick so I can show you how you can apply it. Let's say for example, model something like this and have stitching going around here. So I'll just start very basic. I'll just create a plane. And as you model this, it's a good idea to set up the topology in such a way that it's easy to extract the loop of polygon. So I'll just insert an edge through here, just scale this inwards. Just something as simple as this, and then a shell. All right, and then just turbo smooth. Or I could just use open subdiv. And I can just select all of these edges here and give this a slight crease value here, just like that. And now let's say I want to have another object going around here. And I'll detach this clone. And apply a shell modifier. This time I'll decrease the outer amount here. All right. So I would easily apply the displacement texture and the alpha mask to this object here. What I would do is simply just click a polygon here, hold shift and click to just loop all this. And this is where I want the stitching to be. And now I'll just beforehand create a new material. So I'll just create a new viewer material here. Because I want to create a leather texture, so I'll just set up some quick leather parameters here. All right, and I will apply. I'll double click on bitmap and actually select the displacement texture. And here it is. I'll just plug this into diffuse temporarily. And actually I'll make this the second map channel right here. So now with these polygons selected, I will apply UW map. And I will set the map channel down here to be two. And I will actually go into the materials and have this be visible in the viewport. And now I'll switch from planar to face right here. So now every face has pretty much an equal texture right there. In a bitmap settings, I may have to just rotate this a little bit by 90 degrees. And now you can see it's properly aligned. So let's say I want there to be two rows of stitching. I'll just go back to the settings. I can change one of these settings right here. And it looks like it's not quite there, so I may just want to change the offset here. And there we go, now I have two rows of stitching. All right, so this is the second channel here. So now I'll apply a poly just to clear the stack right here, because you see this little box indicates that the previous selection is being used here. I want to reset that, and now I will apply an UW modifier, and I'll switch the map channel to be 2. Abandon, and open UV editor. And you can see if I select these polygons, notice how they're perfectly applied here, because when you apply UW map and use the face option, every single polygon is pretty much perfectly applied here. So I just want to see the texture in the viewport right here. And here it is. But now what I'll do is press Control i to select Inverse and just do a basic planar map right here. 
So now what I want to do is actually just to scale this, make it very small here, and move it off to the side. But this is actually the incorrect place to put this, because if you remember, I actually rotate it right here, which means the proper place is not here, but up here. So always take in consideration the rotation or any other edits you may have done. I'll just put this way all the way up here. And actually, I'll just have one by one tiling. All right, and there we are. And now I can just apply the poly on top. I can just turbo smooth here. And I'll apply V-Ray Displacement Modifier. Since I'm using V-Ray, that's how I apply displacement. I pretty much want to drag this right over here as an instance. And I can unplug this out of the fuse. But I actually do want to create the fuse texture here because I want there to be black leather and white stitching. So create a composite map. Plug this into the fuse. And now I'll just create a very color map. I'll just make this a very dark color here. This will go into layer one. And now I'll create a new layer here. Hold shift to make a clone of this. And I'll make this white. This will be the stitching. Layer two. But now I need a mask for layer two. I want to use the same tiling and rotation settings right here. So I'll just hold down shift to make a copy of this. So it's still using the same settings with the book click on this. And now I'll click here and change the texture. So here we go. And this would be the mask. And I'll put this into the layer two mask. So there we are. And now just apply this material right here to this object. As for this object here, I would just make a copy of this material. First, I'll just right click and hide unused node slots. Just make a copy of this, take out a diffuse map, and just apply this right here. Because I don't want all of these things to affect this object here. All right, and now I'll do a quick render so we can test out our displacement and diffuse. And as you can see, we get a very nice result here. This will look even better if I apply a bump map and another texture for the leather, because right now I'm just using a basic dark gray color. But well, as you can see, we get the same kind of curve right here that we saw in the reference image. So this is what I find to be the fastest, easiest method to create this kind of high quality accurate stitching with displacement mapping applied. No need for any painting or sculpting or anything else. And now if I want to increase the amount of stitches here, just go back to the materials. This is the displacement text right here. I'll just simply plug this into one of the slots here. Let's go with reflect map. And I'll just have it be visible in the viewport. And now I can just increase the tiling right here. So let's try 1.5. And I can see there's much greater tiling. And if I want there to be two rows here, I'll just increase this number right here and change the offset here. All right, just like that. And now I'll take this out of reflect. But remember, we also want to set up the same settings for the color mask right here. So 2, 1.5, 0.26. 2, 1.5, and 0.26. There we are. So always be sure to keep all of your bitmaps here consistent. And now I will re-render. And now I've got two rows of stitches right here. So just by changing some simple parameters, we can change the stitching here. Thank you for watching, and take care.